Hey, what's up everybody? This is Caroline. Welcome back to part two of Beginning Metal. In this video, we'll take a high level look at what the GPU does for us and also how the metal pipeline fits in. At the end of this video, we'll have an app that draws a screen in Ray Wenderlich green. It may not look like much progress, but we'll have taken the first steps in exploring the metal pipeline. The A series chip inside the iPhone and iPad is a marvel of engineering. It's an SOC, which means a system on a chip. Inside this chip is integrated the dual core CPU, the multi-core GPU, the motion coprocessor, and all the supporting extras that these chips need. From a high level point of view, the CPU has a few powerful processors whereas the GPU has many more, less powerful processors. This means that the CPU is good at doing one job really well over several threads, and the GPU can do small tasks all at the same time. It's not quite all at the same time, but conceptually we'll pretend that it is. Let's have a demonstration. Let's say that we have an array and we want to add one to every item in the array. We might do this using a for loop or Swift's map function. We have some code saying add one to each item. When this command is executed, each item in the array is updated one at a time. It obviously happens faster than this, but you can see the process. Let's have a look at how the GPU does this. Instead of having a for loop, we put a small program for the add one command on all the GPU's processes. When the command is executed, all these programs run at the same time. So each item in the array is incremented simultaneously. Let's see that again. You can see how much faster the GPU has done the update. In real life, it's not quite as simple as this. For reasonably sized arrays, the speed of getting the commands running on the GPU is slower than it would be to run the loop on the CPU. The GPU is really good at mathematically intensive tasks that can run in parallel. Later on, we'll see that the GPU shines at moving around parts of 3D models and computing color to put onto the screen. These are both tasks that are simple and mathematical in nature, but also tasks where all the calculations can be done simultaneously. So now let's get started with an overview of what we have to do in Metal to get everything ready for the GPU to render. At the start of a Metal app, we create a device object that represents the GPU. The GPU needs to be able to accept a list of commands. So we also set up a command queue when the app starts. We set a pipeline state that among other things, will tell the GPU what shader functions to use. Generally at the start of the app, we'll also set up a series of special metal buffers. These are memory areas that will hold the models and the textures that we'll use in the app. For example, if we were rendering a triangle, we would store the locations of each vertex in the triangle in a buffer. For each frame, we'll need to create a list of the commands for the GPU, such as draw the contents of the triangle buffer. So we create a command buffer to store these commands in. Each command is stored in a render command encoder. This contains all the state information that the GPU will need to execute that command. When we've encoded all our commands, we commit the command buffer, which sends it off to the GPU. That's a lot of things to remember, but you'll soon see how each step works. And because it's repetitive, you'll soon be using these items with ease. Now we'll see what happens on the GPU. When rendering computer graphics, there's a strict pipeline. A pipeline is just a sequence of operations that the GPU will perform. Along this pipeline are certain states that you would already have set up so that the GPU can do its job. The pipeline steps colored green here are the ones where you have complete control. 
The purple steps happen on the GPU automatically. Let's render this triangle onto the screen and have a very high level look at some of the operations along the way. We'll be covering why the GPU likes triangles in the next video. Using the process in the previous slide, we've already set up the buffer containing the vertices of the triangle. We could also allocate a color to each vertex. We then commit the command buffer to the GPU. The vertex shader function, which we write, processes every vertex in the buffer. Here in this vertex function is where you can animate your objects by repositioning their vertices each frame. We write these shader functions in a special metal shading language. After the GPU has processed all the vertices, they're assembled into primitives. A primitive is a point or a line or a triangle or a strip of triangles. Some vertices may be clipped now if they don't fit inside the screen coordinates. The rasterizer works out what fragments belong inside each triangle. Each pixel on the screen uses this fragment data to determine its color. Each fragment is then put through a fragment shader function, which we write. This fragment function returns a color for the fragment. Here we can calculate lighting and shading. Each fragment is a certain distance from each primitive vertex. So if we're giving the vertices different colors, the resulting color will be an interpolated blend of those vertex colors. Finally, the fragment buffers are depth tested so that objects further away aren't displayed. And then the final result is displayed on the screen. So now that we've had an overview of what happens, we can put this into practice and start our metal application by clearing the screen to a Wenderlich green color. First, we'll create a new project. This will be an iOS single view application project and we'll call it Ray Break. This is the name of the game that we'll ultimately make. In main.storyboard, we'll change the main view to be an MTK view. This is a metal kit view, and it'll handle a lot of the metal API stuff for us. In view controller, I'll first clean up the generated code. And the first thing I have to do is import metal kit and that gives us access to the metal kit framework. And we created a, an MTK view on the storyboard, so I'm going to create a view variable to access this view. And I'll create the variables that we'll need for the device and for the command queue. We set these up once at the very start of the app. So in view did load, we create the representation of the GPU, and this is the device. We then clear the screen to a particular color, and we'll set up this color as an enum to be tidy. And set the view's clear color. This is the color that the screen will clear to. Now we create the command queue, and this will hold all our command buffers. and create the command buffer that will hold all the commands. And now we can create the render command encoder for all our commands. We use the MetalView's current render pass descriptor to make this command. I'll be talking about descriptors later. We don't actually have any commands, so we'll just end the command coding present the command buffer and commit it to the GPU. When I run the app, I'm actually running it on my iPhone 6S device because Metal doesn't run in the simulator. I'm catching, capturing the screen using QuickTime. And now we have a green screen. Going over what I just did, First, I create a reference to the GPU, and that's the device. I create a command queue, 
and there should only be one device and one command queue per application. I then created a command buffer to hold the command encoder. And when I'd finished encoding all the commands, I sent the command buffer to the GPU. The code I've written is fine for clearing the screen. The problem is that it doesn't run every frame, so we can't ever update what's on the screen. The metal kit view that we're using has a protocol that has a method that's called every frame. So we'll conform to this protocol. There are two required methods in the MTK view delegate. Drawable size will change is called whenever the view size changes. For example, when the user rotates the device and we'll be using this later. The method that's called every frame is draw in. The view has a drawable. This is an object that is displayable on the screen and we issue our rendering commands to this drawable. The view also has a render pass descriptor, and this describes how the buffers are to be rendered. We use this descriptor to create the command encoder. So we check that those aren't nil. And now I can cut and paste the code from view did load. and change the descriptor reference. And the drawable reference. In view did load, I tell the metal view that the view controller is its delegate. And build and run. And now we have a green screen but we have a method which we can build up to draw textures every frame. That's it for this video tutorial. And now I have your first challenge waiting for you. Throughout this course, you'll be refactoring what we've done during the demo. Currently, I have all the rendering code in the view controller, which really isn't the best place for it. Rendering details should be abstracted away as much as possible. My challenge to you is to move the rendering code into a renderer class. The app will produce the same output, but the code will be a lot neater. You'll find full details in the accompanying challenge document. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to render triangles. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.